Week one did not go the way that we thought it was going to go. <laughs> not even close. It was absolutely brutal. Nothing looked like any sort of bright spot. There was nothing positive to take away from it. 18 penalties is f insane. Week two, we got a win. Not a super pretty win against absolute scrubs, but we won by 20 on the road. So everybody needs to settle down. Everything on Twitter, everything on Sports Talk Radio is absolutely f nuts about how bad the Browns look. We won by 20 on the god road. Nobody played in preseason. We have a first year head coach. Take a deep breath and enjoy the fact that we have one win. We did that over two seasons just a couple years ago. Enjoy this. <laughs> we have watchable football. Stop being such d**ks about it. Now I'm a little late on this, but there is one thing that I, I have to talk about. I can't keep my mouth shut about this. And it's the guy that got in trouble for throwing beer on Logan Ryan when he jumped into the dog pound versus the Titans. Is it something I would do personally? No. Do I think he should have done it? No. Do I think that a player should be able to taunt the dog pound with absolute impunity? No, absolutely not. Quite frankly, I don't give a single that a millionaire got a little bit of beer on him when he didn't want to have a little bit of beer on him. Is this what we've become? Is this who we are now? This is an outrage. This is a bannable offense that the dog pound did that. It's the dog pound. What happened to the dog pound? Logan Ryan taunts a notoriously rowdy fan base that had been irate over how terrible, 18 penalties, how terrible what they had been watching all day was. And he expects you to just have no repercussions. Just go and slap him in the face with no repercussions. I can't believe the Browns actually banned him. The Browns banned him. We used to have a reputation for things like this. We used to be among the most feared fans of anything in the world. We provided that team with the biggest home field advantage in all of sports. And now, this is what they do. The Browns used to have our backs on shit like this. One of my all-time favorite moments in Cleveland sports history happened back in 1989 in Cleveland Municipal Stadium when John Elway and the Denver Broncos rolled into town. John Elway was public enemy number one in Cleveland at that point. This is on the heels of the drive and the fumble. And this guy brings that stupid horse face to the shores of Lake Erie, looking like a human Bronco. Looking like he should be collecting royalty checks off the Broncos logo. The game was tied at 13. It was coming to an end. The Denver Broncos had driven down to the Browns' four-yard line directly in front of the dog pound. Now, we've talked before about how the Cleveland fans in a collective fit of rage have thrown bottles onto the field of players and referees and such. But on this day, in the act of the ultimate home field advantage, Cleveland fans started making it rain Milk bone dog treats, double A batteries, eggs, and rocks all over the Denver players as well as the referees. It got so bad that the referees called a 15 yard penalty, threw a flag on the city of Cleveland. 15 yard penalty, walked them back, and then as they continued to rain down, two eggs hit one of the guards from the Denver Broncos. A ref took a rock in the head. Batteries, milk bones everywhere. They picked the ball up and they walked it from one four yard line, 96 yards, to the other four yard line. The Denver Broncos ended up fumbling the ball. The Browns picked it up. Bernie Kosar got the ball back, drove us down, kicked a field goal with the win, as opposed to kicking it into the wind, which is the direction that things were going before we made them reverse it because we were them up with debris. After the game, Coach Bud Carson was asked about how things went, and he said that he was happy for the Cleveland fans. He said he was happy for us. He said it was like our Super Bowl. Cornerback Frank Minifield said that, yeah, they were throwing stuff. He said, we always throw stuff. It's no different than usual. He said, in fact, he thought it was kind of mild. And it wasn't just the Browns not making a big deal out of things. It was everybody. I Googled it. I went looking for information. I found a Sports Illustrated article from 1989 about the game. It was called Nip It in the Bud, about Bud Carson taking over the Browns. It's a 23 paragraph long article about that game. 23 paragraphs, one and a half paragraphs 
about people throwing things on the field and them having to reverse the direction. The rest of it was about football. Stop trying to neuter the dog pound. Stop bringing your children to the dog pound and having a problem with adults yelling obscenities. Don't bring your kid in the first place. They don't belong there. Stop sticking up for an entitled millionaire instead of a blue collar fan that did something kind of sh**, but overall harmless. Fear and respect the dog pound. That's what we should be taking away from this. We've been working 35 years. We've been working real hard for 35 years for this reputation that we have. It means something to us. Yeah, that did something dumb, but he's our ass. Go Browns.